let's talk about the IPOs. Because I feel like uh, after a quiet December, if you will, and a kind of a medium January, we've had two debuts now. We've had Casper, the mattress company, and we've also had one medical um what the hell do we call a medical kind of a concierge on demand medical service business? Something like that. It, healthcare 1.5. Healthcare yeah. 1.5. It's not SAS though. <laughs> um, so the big news though, this week in the IPO world, and I'm sure if you're listening to this, you've heard us talk about it is that um, Casper went public. They lowered their IPO price range from um, 17 to $19 a share to 12 to 13, which was, you know, quite a lot lower. Uh, and then, um, today they closed at, and I have this in my notes up. They closed at about thirteen fifty, according to um, according to Google Finance. So it was a debut that was pretty good. I mean, they ended up up twelve and a half percent today. Uh, a slightly better result than I expected, but certainly not where they wanted to price. Lost in valuation, but they had a good first day. One medical, on the other hand, priced at the lower end of its range, and then exploded out of the gate after pricing. I think it was fourteen. They're now worth twenty five. And uh, here's my question for, for us. Um, I don't get why One Medical is worth so much more money per dollar of revenue than, than Casper, given that neither one of them is a majority recurring revenue business. Neither one of them is growing particularly quickly. They're both unprofitable and they both don't have SaaS-like gross margins. And yet the market is saying these are so very different that Casper is worth so much less per dollar of revenue. And I'm curious if we have any hypotheses to help better understand how the public market is valuing these two formerly private companies. And I want to start with Rick on this one. So I can't say anything specifically about Casper since sure. we're a big shareholder. Look, I think, um, I think you have to find investors that really believe in the overall thesis in the space first and foremost. And if you look at the companies that are going public, you know, these, these public equity investors are doing a lot of analysis on the numbers, right? And so they have their own theses. They apply different multiples to different margin profiles to different sectors. You can always find people that are more bullish or more bearish mm -hmm. in different business models. And so it really comes down to who's a believer in, in what we're trying to do. And ultimately for these companies that are going public, you know, they're, they're betting on themselves, right? They're putting them out themselves out into the, into the public sphere and they got to hit their numbers. Right. And so no matter where they, they price from an IPO perspective, now it's on them to perform. Yeah, I mean, an IPO is certainly not the end of the road. It's just one pricing event, one fundraising event. And to be clear, I'm not trying to be mean. I, they both priced, they both went public, hats off. It's a big event. It's a big day for the companies. A long time coming. Much work went into it. I, just to me, the, the way one medical priced conservatively and then exploded was a surprise. Casper then priced conservatively and also did well, but just where they've ended up feels further apart in terms of revenue multiples than I would have. I, th I think one medical is like 10 or something and Casper is like 1.4. I, I just, I mean, uh, like, uh, has there been a lot of DTC IPOs? I, I don't follow the DTC space very closely, but I, I think it's actually one of the first of this whole set of companies to yeah. actually get all the way to the public markets, right? Yes. I, I think one of the, the big challenges when you're the, the, the trailblazer, one of these kind of new spaces, right, is, um, you know, there's been a lot of acquisitions privately. You know, P&G has bought a couple of different brands and certainly some of the other um, uh, folks in the space have been bought out, but we haven't seen a lot go to IPO. And so this is sort of the first company that a lot of investors are sort of taking a look at the numbers they're sort of understanding the new revenue models around marketing and, and sort of direct marketing to consumers and what does that mean for the revenue model. And so I think these kinds of companies are always going to, I don't want to say struggle, but they're always going to have that extra work to convince and conv uh, investors, not just in themselves, but also in the model itself and how it works. We saw the same thing in SaaS, you know, seven, eight years ago where True. no one understood SaaS. It was only a three, four, five X multiple. Now it's 30 as people <laughs> sort of, which may be, may be on the high end, but at, like at the end of the day, like a lot of that just took convincing. It took a whole set of companies to come through. So the question I, to, I would pose to Casper is, you know, we have a bunch of other companies coming up. We, we know at least five or six other companies on the docket for IPO this year in the D2C space. You know, will their kind of road shows and selling of the D2C model sort of help Casper or hurt it long term? Well, I don't see how it could hurt it. I mean, I, I think more market understanding of how the economics of D2C works will help. I mean, just people better understanding the space that you work in, provided that you're operating well. And I have no reason to believe that Casper isn't. Uh, I think that's got to help. But I mean, maybe you're, maybe this is just a trailblazing moment and they got, you know, they're, they're the first one through the brambles, for lack of a better phrase. I also think, I also think there's a lot of concern in the, in, in the, for shareholders around marketing costs. Um, uh, you know, we saw this with TripAdvisor's last quarter where uh, marketing costs on Google kind of skyrocketed in the stock tank 20% in a day. Um, so I, I, I do think there's a lot of concern around, you know, much as we were just talking about with Sandoso, you know, there is a lot of saturation in marketing. Marketing costs are going up for a lot of firms, you know, traffic acquisition. 
Um, and so, you know, again, a long term, I think investors will sort of come to an equilibrium and it may not be this one. Mm. Well, let's go ahead and take Rick off the hot seat so he doesn't have to look mm-hmm. uncomfortable about us talking about his portfolio <laughs> company. 